Hi, I'm Matthew Tosh. This is another junk food science lesson based on the spoof television news report about a proposed ban of foods deemed unhealthy to under 16s. It uses role play, which can be a valuable way of enabling students to discuss scientific issues in a balanced way, as well as developing speaking and listening skills. The fisherman's ring technique you'll see in this lesson is a structured role play in which the students rehearse arguments for and against the ban. It encourages all students to take part in the discussion and helps them to refine, change and develop their arguments. You can find the news report video and many other resources to help deliver this lesson at the address on the screen. Here, Louis Gomez, chemistry teacher at Woodkirk High School near Wakefield, is running the role play with his Year 8 class. During the lesson, he'll go through all five phases of the active teaching and learning process. Preparation, briefing, action, debriefing and follow-up. The briefing phase starts with the students watching the news report video and making notes on the arguments presented by the various contributors. Now some breaking news just in. The British Institute of Eating Control is proposing to ban under 16s from eating certain foods. They say that the cost of treating diet related illnesses is now too high. From the outset I did actually tell them be thinking about what evidence and what pros and cons are there for introducing the ban or not introducing the ban. Once the video has finished, Louis asks students to share the points they have recorded with the whole class. Before the action phase of the role play, students take some time to produce their own personal lists of arguments for and against the ban. They will need time for this and you'll need to ensure that all students are fully prepared. The um, parents complained that well, some of them might not be able to have time to cook or can't cook, right. so it'll be harder for them. People need healthy food in the schools like are doing that so it'll be easier for them because it's a law now. What evidence did we have? Because this is a science class, what sort of scientific things? That you can get cancer. Increased chance of cancer. When they did the graphs on the video of the rise of obesity. Would that be evidence for or against the ban? For it. For the ban, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, the curriculum is sort of geared more towards not just facts and figures, but they're actually towards, you know, what do you actually think, what are the pros and cons for this type of action that we could do within science, and I think uh, it's opened out a bit more into that. To start the action phase, students sit in two concentric circles, so that each student is sitting facing another. Louis then explains how the fisherman's ring activity will work. The students sitting in the inner circle are given two minutes to argue the case in favour of the band to their partner sitting opposite, who should listen without making comments. The students in the outer circle then have two minutes to present the arguments against the band to their partners. Um, there was a bar chat, it was saying the obesity, like whether it's increasing or it's going down, and also there was um, the chance of diseases. So many people get diseases because um, um, as they get older, it's increasing. Then the students in the outer circle move one place to the left and the process is repeated allowing the students to repeat and refine their arguments. Um, people need a balanced diet and if they don't have enough like, fat and stuff in their diet, then, like, they won't be very well. The NHS is trouble for the NHS because it gets 4.2 billion pounds and it, it gets doubled it every year. So that will be like, like 4 billion pounds. So it's re like, most, most patients are coming in and it's like, costing too much. After arguing the same point of view twice, the students move one place to the left, but this time put forward the opposite view. I mean, back yourself up. Don't just say an opinion, just say the evidence behind it. Like, um, it, it just makes you get stronger with okay. all the healthy food. If you've got kids that are not too forthcoming with, you know, putting their hands up all the time, it's a really good task to actually get them, you know, stood up out of the seats, moving along to the next person, to the next person. And, you know, they could actually, uh, even though they're not being really vocal within the, you know, the public sort of arena, if you will, they're being, you know, they're just talking to it one-on-one, uh, -on -one, so I think that actually worked well. Once the students have repeated the for and against arguments twice, the teacher debriefs them by asking different students to outline their arguments. The teacher has an opportunity to correct any misconceptions at this point and summarise the key points made. OK, so arguments for the ban. 
saying that it'll um, help keep the costs down for things because of the healthcare yeah. implications. Because they're all about it's going to double by 2050. Mm -hmm. But if they can stop this obesity, it'll cut back on the cost a lot, which helps with stuff like the recession, things like that. They have more money in the government for other things. Yeah. They are more important, so they're not wasting the time because people are obese. It'll decrease that. They won't need to care for people getting cancers. Brilliant. Often. What I really loved about uh, Matthew's answer there is that he not only spoke about the argument, he also actually sort of threw in a bit of the evidence there, didn't he? Because he's sort of talking about the increased risk of, um, of like, cancers. As a follow-up, students use evidence, their scientific knowledge and understanding to compose a letter to the fictional British Institute of Eating Control, explaining their arguments for or against the ban. I've never tried anything like that within a science lesson, uh, but, you know, to my surprise, it actually, like, worked really well. Because so many ideas were being explained in advantages, disadvantages, what other people thought, uh, the actual the final task of writing a letter to the director of the company, um, usually when you ask kids to do something like that, they're like, oh, oh, not that, not that. But they actually like just got on with it and they were quite like engaged to do something like that. So I think it sort of like did lead them up to actually, you know, putting their own ideas individually down on paper. So yeah, it worked well.